Um, a lot of people do, a lot of my friends do. When they um, heard I was becoming a maths teacher, they'd say, why? Maths, so much hard work, okay? It's, it's hard work to understand some of the ideas. Um, it's hard work to practice some of the skills and really master them, okay? But I want to tell you a secret, okay? And in fact, I'm going to ask you to write it down. Mathematicians, and um, we are all mathematicians, people who do math, okay? Mathematicians only ever do hard work because they want to make things easy. Can we write this down? Yeah, I've got it on the board. So it should be in your book. Let me try and explain this, right? Because it sounds weird, it sounds unusual, it sounds kind of backwards, right? Mathematicians work hard because they're lazy. How's that work? Try and explain. Sometimes a problem, it, it looks hard, it looks difficult, it looks like it's going to take a long time. Mathematicians, I'm going to try and work out, is there like a pattern here? There's something I can do with this problem that will make it a little bit simpler. It will make it easier to work with, or quicker, or um, easier to make less mistakes. Yes? Some type of formula, kind of way to do it. Yeah, that's right. So sometimes we call these formulas, sometimes we call them strategies. There's all kinds of names for these things. And rounding and estimating are one of those strategies, right? They're kind of two words for the same thing. It's a bit of hard work to wrap your head around rounding and estimating the first time. Once you do it, it's really helpful. So let me give you an example. Okay. I'm going to write down a sum for you. I'm going to put together um, a bunch of um, numbers, a list of numbers, and the idea is to add them up. So write this list of numbers with me. Here's the problem we're looking at. Here's the question. Now, some of you might look at that and think, oh, I can jump right into solving that. Just hold your horses for a second before we do that. Now, this is a prickly problem, right? There's a lot of numbers. I mean, who knows what these numbers are? They could be people, or they could be um, donuts. I'm, I'm really hungry right now, in case you can tell. Um, they, could be, they could be pencils, that you're it could be anything, okay? There's a lot of numbers, like five numbers on the list, and also they're kind of awkward numbers. They're difficult to work with. Like you can see, for instance, if I add together, just, just look at the first two numbers, right? If I add these together, I'm gonna to have some like carrying tens and carrying hundreds. Do you remember that? You've seen that before? And that can be hard. It's easy to get that wrong, right? So this is a tricky problem. This is tricky. Yes, question. Yeah, that's right. Like there's just a whole bunch of things that I don't like about this problem. Okay, but that's okay. As a mathematician, I look at this and I think, hmm, maybe I can make this a bit easier, a bit simpler for me. Okay, because you know, sometimes, all the time actually, the exact answer that you want at the end, sometimes the exact answer, not that important. Okay, you just want to get roughly in the ballpark and then you can use that information and go ahead. This happens all the time. For instance, if you want to buy the number of sausages for a barbecue, okay, you don't need to go to each person and say, now, how many sausages do you do it? Is it, is it two? Is it three? 2.7? Yeah, we'll go with 2.7. Okay, so, yeah, that looks about right. Yeah, okay. How many sausages do you do? And like, get really, really exact. It's a bit silly. Just kind of round it off, get to an approximate number, and then I can make sure everyone is fed, right? Or, you know, how many, how many hours of YouTube can I watch before my iPhone battery dies? Okay, well, you don't have to be exact down to the minute. You can get in the rough ballpark and then just make sure your phone doesn't die, okay? So that's all we're going to do with this list of numbers. Uh, if you have another colour, that would be really handy, but if you don't, that's alright. What I want to do with each of these numbers is I'm going to round them. I'm going to get close to a number that, rather than being icky and odd or unusual, is just like a simple number. Okay? So, we'll talk a little bit about the exact process that I go through here, but for now, let's just follow step by step. 631. 631? That's a bit awkward. It's pretty close, it's in the ballpark of 600. Do you agree with that? Like, it's obviously, it's a bit different, but they're roughly the same, okay? If you looked at a group of 631 people, and you looked at another group of 600 people, I think you'd be hard pressed. I know, I'd be hard pressed to work out which group is bigger, okay? 600, that's fine. I've got 280. What's a number that's nice and round that's close to that? Yeah, go ahead. 300. 300, perfect. You know, um, I could have gone up, I could have gone down, but that's that's pretty close, okay? And it's also great because this number's a bit smaller than that, but this number's a bit bigger. So I'm trying to like even things out a little bit, okay? 
I'll do the rest of the numbers a bit quicker. I think that um, this 51 is very, very close to 50. Um, this 43 is very close to 40. And this last one, I reckon you guys can help me. What do you think 96 is close to? 100. Yeah, perfect. I think that's outstanding. Okay. Now have a look at this. Okay. This set of numbers is not exactly equal to what we got in the first place. Obviously, I've changed all the numbers. But they're still pretty close. Okay. So instead of saying this equals this, I'm going to put, I love this, I'm going to put a wiggly equals sign out the front. Okay, you guys know what an equal sign means? It means these things are identical. They're the same. The wiggly equal sign means eh, they kind of the same. The official name is they're approximately equal. Okay. In fact, let's just write that on the side here. This means approximately equal. Okay. So we're in the right ballpark. And now, this is marvellous because all these numbers are quite easy to deal with, okay? We can start to put these together and it's, it's not hard at all. For instance, let's go to the next line. I can see three of my numbers. One, two, three. These guys are all in the hundreds, right? Don't shout it out yet. Who can put their hand up and tell me what happens when you add 600, 300, and 100? Someone has the same thing yet. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A thousand, fantastic, because the first two numbers, that's 900, you bump it up with the last one, that's a thousand, so I'll, I'll just write that down first. That was really easy, like within five seconds, almost all of you had your hands up. An easy one to work out. And uh, then what I've got left over is uh, these pair of numbers, right? 50 and 40, and I think you can all shout out and tell me that. 90. 90, fantastic. Okay, so, very good. And lickety split, we're almost done. I have... An answer that's well, it's not exact. I know it's not exact, but it's pretty close. It's pretty close. And most importantly, it was very quick. Like we did that. We just talked through it. You didn't have to do any hard like ooh, let me do the long division or something like that. Done. Now, just over on the side here. Okay. Now you don't need to write this part down, but I just want you to observe the process. Okay. We're not going to add up this thing. I'm going to try and do it exactly, just to see like. How close were we? I knew we were kind of close, but how close? Okay. So let's try and do it, and I'll do it from left to right. I'll do it one step at a time, okay? So, look at these. Mm, okay, I'll do, the, um, I'll do the 80 first. If I add 80 to this, what do I get? 700 and... Any takers? Anyone? Yeah, Keegan, what do you reckon? Um, 710. 710 is very close. 11. Yeah, 711 because we've got the one at the end. Good, that's 711. Adding that's okay, good, you got it. 711, and then I'll do the 200. So 711 plus 200 gives me, yeah, 911. So I'm trying to do this one exactly over here. Okay, um, 51 and 43, that one's not so bad. 51 and 43, the 10s become the four. Okay, so you're doing the units, which is a four. And then the 10s are a... Five and four, which is nine, right? Very good. And then I've got this last number hanging off on the end. Okay, it's not too bad. All right, let's keep going. Ninety-four plus ninety-six. I can see some friends of ten in here, right? What can I use? Yeah, Bradley. Two hundred. Very good. Whoa, hold on. Ninety-four plus ninety-six. Very close to two hundred. It's it's really close to two hundred, isn't it? Um, let me try to do this step by step. Do you want to help me out with the yeah? What do you think? Um. How did you do it? Yeah, what are you talking about? Um, you kept the, what, the units together, which is 10. Mm -hmm. You add a 0 and add a 1, 2, then 9. So yeah. Yep. Yeah. Very good. So this one may become 100 because you used the 10 plus 9. And then you have the 90 that's all left over. So 190, that's 190, isn't it? Okay. Last step, and I did this one earlier, so I'm just going to tell you the answer, at least if I get it right. This looks to me like that one's going to carry over. That'll be one, one, zero, one. What do you think? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Pretty good? Yeah? Okay, all right. Now, have a look. Let's notice two things. Number one, how close was I? Like, how far was I off from the answer? I was about I was about ten off, right? Like eleven off. Okay, that's really close. Not bad. That's the first thing I want you to notice. The second thing I want you to notice is 
man, this was hard. Like, did you notice how hard it was? We got it wrong a couple of times, and that's quite natural, because these numbers are gross. That's what we started with, right? So this process here, we got there eventually. We needed all of us, and we need to double check that we were right. This one, quick, easy, and very, very close. 